Hello! And welcome back to Phoenix Wright! I'm finally gonna do it! <laughs> wow! Amazing! Let's see... Uh, hi, how's everyone doing? I forgot how to do mod actions. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. I'll just, I'll just time you out. <laughs> <How about that? laughs> wow, ninety-seven mining. Isn't doesn't it only go up to a hundred? Feels like you're pretty far. That's a lot of my a lot of RuneScape. I almost said Minecraft. Oh, that sounds awesome. I am probably going to have a turkey sandwich after this stream. Or two. 92 is halfway to 99. I don't understand that, but uh, that's fine. I don't need to understand everything. The only thing I'm interested in understanding is justice. And, and we're going to give... We're gonna give old Dracula. Uh oh. Oh, I thought it crashed. Okay, great. <laughs> We're gonna give Von Karma a nice heap and helping of justice. Assuming things don't crash. Okay. Why is it why is it being a fucking piece of shit right now? Okay, let's uh Is that help? Oh, Dom Klein! Uh part four. This is part four. Yes, correct. Chapter four. Turnabout goodbyes. Oh, this is it. Judgment Day. Oh, really? Is, uh, are we going to put Von Karma on the stand? Or, uh, is Miles finally going to get his day in court? I don't know. The things are going to going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Oh, I wonder if we're finally going to see Mia again. <gasps> Warg! What's the big idea? Oh, oh, okay. Somebody in the fourth game is named just... Oh, Apollo Justice, you mean? As of now, I only have the uh, Phoenix Wright trilogy. And this is the only game I've played so far. Oh, sorry, Nick. I, I only touched your shoulder. Oh, she's electric. I guess a shock hasn't worn off from my running with the stun gun yesterday. I don't, I don't think that's how that works. Maya? <laughs> Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Oh, uh, Edgy. How you feeling, buddy? You look pensive. And glum, as always. I hope Von Karma doesn't push him to. Didn't Von Karma like steal uh, evidence or something? He should be on trial. Also, hi, Mixel. Have a good sleep. Whoa! What are you? What are you doing? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Oh, she's electric now. This is awesome. <laughs> Maya, maybe should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Oh, maybe that waterfall. Finally. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Oh, she shocked a gumshoe. Maya. I remember the voices I did. Wow, what's gotten into that girl? Detective Gumshoe. Morning. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, good morning. <laughs> How did it go, Detective? I have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. Oh, Yanny Yogi. I just brought him in. Took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Go to sleep now. Actually, after that shock I got on the way in, I feel pretty good. 
Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? Blackmail. I'm gonna say Von Karma has blackmail on Yanny Yogi. Hey, boo boo. He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. I feel like Von Karma is really like where the focus needs to be. December 28th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh, I, yeah, why did it take all night to capture an old man? I don't know. All right, very well. We've reached the final day in our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Oh, uh, does he have evidence? Probably not, right? Come on, don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the boat rental shop caretaker has been arrested. Why don't we just say his name? It would, it would save time. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, the caretaker has yet to confirm this. Oh, we're just gonna wait for a, a confession. Okay, cool. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. I don't think he did it. I mean, he maybe he did it, but it's not his fault. Not every murder is your fault. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness, Boat Guy. He lives in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the incident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness, why did you run away? <laughs> you know what, fair question. Why did you run away? The witness was not running away as he will now testify. I see. Very well, please begin your testimony. I mean, he did run away though, right? Mmm, mmm. I forgot my old man voice. My other old man voice. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly. See, I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. That's a bad alibi. <laughs> I mean, I'd need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Huh, okay. But you do have a motive. Hmm, very well. <gasps> Can we get the parrot on the, on the stand? God, that'd be so good. Let's begin the cross-examination. Uh, he has to know his name. Yanni Yogi. You're Yanni Yogi. <laughs> and I'm going to prove it. What if he isn't? That'd be crazy. Alright, time to press this old man. Uh, I'd call what you did running away and not just leaving. You've heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Nuh-uh. Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Oh, he sure seems relaxed. In fact, they both do. I mean, he relaxed and tired are similar, I suppose. Okay, he wasn't running away. I gotta press you on that. Then why did you leave? He's about to say. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got it. I have to press. Went to buy some food for Polly. Hmm, that's very interesting. Food? Well, Polly is a bit of a gourmand, you see. She only eats these high quality bird pellets from France. They only have them in the big pet shop downtown. 
Uh, but you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? Eh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. Oh, he's got that brain thing. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. I get that. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try, Von Karma. No one's going to believe that. Yeah, they will. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, Your Honor, come to your senses. Okay, got nothing to do with it. Hmm, that's very interesting. You've lost much of your memory, is that correct? Eh, hey, yep, seems like it. Then how could you know that you don't have anything to do with this incident? Eh. Uh, or? Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court your proof. Oh, fuck. How am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? Actually, do I have anything for this? How would I prove? <gasps> the, the parrot. Oh man, it's finally time to put the parrot on the stand, baby. Okay, I'm ready for that. That's impossible. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness, please continue. Ah, oh, you need one of those motive things. Hmm. Unless you did have a motive. How can you say you have no motive? I say, you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hammond. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge, it's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's gonna be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Y yes yYes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now over and over, and you've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question. But, does this really have anything to do with the current case? Yes, Your Honor. Motive to do the murder that he... Yeah? Yeah? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. <gasps> I mean, that's a pretty strong uh, order. Mr. Wright, there's a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying... Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. DNA testing. Why didn't we do that? <laughs> oh, now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Uh, don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us the witness's name. His name is Robert Hammond. He's the vi- no, that's stupid. Uh, <laughs> his name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. <gasps> Yogi, that name seems familiar. Did he have a best friend named Boo Boo? Oh, Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident. <gasps> Figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, I don't know. <laughs> Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Mm mm mm. Uh uh. Jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? The parrot. The parrot. 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 I'm so ready. This is a court of law, as you may recall. You need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove he's Yogi right here. Right now. And I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, how are you going to prove it? 
How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. Your Honor, please take this man's. Oh, okay. We're gonna. <laughs> that's that's so logical. Take his fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. I see. That makes sense. Uh, is, is there a problem? I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. Uh, why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? No, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, uh-huh. Hey, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. Burned all my fingers off. No more fingers. <laughs> what? Yogi, you sneak. You burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm, well, if the witness has no fingerprints and he has no blood, so he can't, can't test his blood, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No! Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... It seems that the case has been decided now. No! I know what happened. I know everything! I know everything! That's uh, from Heat Vision and Jack. That's a reference. Good, good reference, me. <laughs> uh, I just can't prove it. But no, I can't let it in like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. The parrot. It's all I've been thinking for, for hours of the case. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have erased his fingerprints. That's crazy. What do I do? Come on, come on. We all, we all know what to do. Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Why would you even suggest that? Yes, that's exactly what I want to do. Wait a, wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot. What is it, Nick? No, you're not gonna. Your Honor, I called Polly to the stand. Uh, take, take Mr. Von Karma up. And my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot, Polly. Order, order. Uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? Need you even ask? This is a farce. I object. I objection. Wait a second, you were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Von Karma. And nobody says a thing that they don't mean. That's, uh, that's illegal. I have the right to do as you suggested. And court is weird. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the one who's gonna go to jail. Nick, this is crazy. Is it crazier than calling a spirit medium to call the spirit of Gregory Edgeworth to testify in the DL6? Come on. Well, still wanna go through with your little game? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Let the parrot take the stand. I will cross-examine her, your honor. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Von Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence. Except the parrot. She's my last chance. Uh, at least I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. Oh, this is my favorite part. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Uh, you have to say, you have to say Polly. Name! The witness is ignoring me. That uh, must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. Very well, witness, 
Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Hello, hello, Squawk. Good, that's a good testimony. Hmm, certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well, begin, <laughs> begin your cross-examination. <laughs> right. What are you gonna do, Nick? I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Uh, I guess I'm gonna press the bird. Do I have any evidence to show the bird? Uh, answers to the name Polly. Uh, so do I just present this or, uh, because it feels like that's what I do. Let's just press. I'm gonna press the bird. Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk, you, you talk to the bird. Uh, what do I say? Have we forgotten something? Wait. What's your name? Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly. Polly. Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? Um, no. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess it doesn't really have anything to do with that, no. Hmm, please only ask questions pertaining to the matter at hand. Very well, witness, continue your testimony. Great, uh, okay. So we do it again. And this time we're gonna ask, uh, have we forgotten something? The DL6, this will prove at least a connection between the two. As I recall two days ago, Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget DL6. If I can get Polly to say that here, that will prove that the caretaker had something to do with DL6. Uh, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello. Hello. <gasps> Uh-oh. That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something? Something we forgot. Hello. Hello. Squawk. Oh no, it's not working, Nick. She won't say it. This is ridiculous. Why won't she say it? Uh, actually, yeah, what's happening? Something the matter, Mr. Wright? Wait. Don't tell me Von Karma expected this. He couldn't have retrained the parrot. Could he? Did he train her not to respond when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? Oh, no. Is this even the right bird? <laughs> Now it's the right bird. Okay, press the bird on the silence. <laughs> Witness, you're here to speak. You must speak to me. Frankly, I can't believe you're speaking to the parrot. That is a reference. Oh, well, I guess we should try to get some information out of her. We need to show the judge the owner is Mr. Yogi. Hello, hello. Okay, so, um, shoot the, shoot the bird. I'm gonna shoot the bird. Okay, uh, let's ask about the safe. Cause she did answer about Polly. So, what's the safe number? Oh, maybe I'll get her to num say the number of that safe. Ah, oh, the safe. Why? Because the other two options didn't work, Maya. Don't you know you're in a video game? Come on, let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number of the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. My, what a reckless parrot. Well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. 
Uh, does it? <gasps> Twelve twenty-eight, the day of the DL six incident, right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. My, I'm having a brain. I'm having a brain thing. Twelve twenty-eight, two thousand and one. Fuck yes. Oh, ho, ho, we did it. Got there with my big brain. Actually, actually it does. That's why I had her say it. Ah, ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. Oh, I'm so ready to show you this proof, you fucking arrogant Dracula. I present the evidence. The DL6 case file. What is this obsession you have with that case? Mr. Wright, where in this file is something relating to that safe number? Uh, the case summary, your honor. As you can clearly see, specifically the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th, 1228. Why, that's today's date! Fifteen years ago. And the number on that safe is... 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. And in that safe... was... the... uh... I don't remember if we looked in the safe. It, something incriminating, I'm sure! I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers to dates. Bah, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 0001 because I'm number one. <laughs> I mean, okay, I give this guy a lot of shit, but that's pretty rad. This has nothing to do with a date, nothing. Mmm, indeed. Alone, it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. We would need some other corroborating evidence. Uh, where am I gonna find that? Nick, we're getting closer. One more. If we can just get one more piece of evidence. Oh, Bosco. Yep. Bosco. Bosco. <laughs> Who is this Bosco? <laughs> Uh, that's a reference. Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. Okay, uh... So, the only other thing... Was that it, the name was Polly. Can I find the name Polly... Anywhere? Uh... District Courthouse. Air in the elevator was depleted. No clues found at the scene. Gregory Edgeworth trapped with Miles. One bullet found on the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Okay, Yanni Yogi. <gasps> Court! Yanni Yogi, age 37. Court bailiff trapped in an elevator with Edgeworth. Memory loss due to oxygen deprivation after his arrest. Fiance Polly Jenkins committed suicide. We got him. We got him. Back it up. Wow, I should have read that. Okay, awesome. Ask for her name. Oh, we're getting there. This is this is super exciting. <laughs> uh, actually, the name does matter, Your Honor. Ah, fascinating. You claim the parrot's name will prove her owner's identity. Then show us this proof. Nick, don't you think you're taking the bluffing a little too far? Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor! The proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... Okay, I'm gonna make sure I have the right page. Victor, suspect data. Okay, great. We got it. 
A DL6 case file. That's quite a large file you have there. Three whole pages, I believe. Which page is this proof on then? Show us or stop wasting our time. Hmm, very well. Mr. Wright, please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to the parrot's name? In this suspect data page? Got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. This page has all the information about Yanni Yogi. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide, see? Mmm, indeed, it does say that, yes. And what was his fiance's name? Polly J. Polly? Exactly, Your Honor. It's not just a, like a pretty default parrot name. It was intentional. Yeah, three pages. How, what a file. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Bah, a mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog. She calls Phoenix. Well, Mr. Phoenix Wright, does that make you my granddaughter's fiance? Uh, is she hot? Uh -oh. We go to jail. We go to directly to jail. <laughs> She's only seven years old. That's enough. I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Oh man, we're killing it. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, uh, this witness, he doesn't remember. No, no, it's okay. I've accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. He's a total zaddy. This is the real Yogi, I think. Finally, he's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting? For 15 years. W well, let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. 15 years ago, I served as bailiff in this very court. Oh, they can't even draw a new, a new back so that he looked cool. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. Order! Yanni Yogi? So was it you who killed Robert Hammond? and tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death. Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand 15 years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. We won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally. A chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. I have no regrets. W wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Holy shit, he really did kill his dad. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? 
Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Case closed. Bing bong. Bing beep boop. Von Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, your honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, then the defendant Miles Edgeworth is... Innocent, in this case at least. Hmm. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? Hooray, we did it! There are a few mysteries left unsolved. <laughs> uh. Still, you were cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So, I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Hooray! Woo! We did it! He's free! That is all. The court is adjourned. Objection! <gasps> uh -huh. Did someone just say objection? It wasn't Von Karma. Wait, but that means... Was it me? Did I say it? Who said it? <gasps> Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgment. Ooh, what, what, what do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. Oh, no. I'm gonna have some V8 energy. Pomegranate blueberry. This stream brought to you by V8. Energy. Pomegranate blueberry. It's got all of the things you need for your body. It's got fruits and vegetables. And caffeine. There's some Foley. <laughs> Oh, delightful. <gasps> Not innocent. As we have heard, Yanni Yogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Uh, cause you you killed your dad on accident with the gun when you were a uh, when you were a boy. Nick, Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's gonna say he's guilty. He's gonna tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's gonna tell them he killed his own dad. Yeah, I know. What do you want me to do? Uh oh, uh, what, what do I do? I mean, honestly, I kind of just. Oh yeah, statute of limitations. Uh oh boy, this feels like a place where I should save the game, <laughs> just in case. Just in case I make a bad call. I really want to raise an objection because this is Phoenix Wright, but... Uh... You know what? Leave it to Edgeworth. I trust him. No. I'm sure Edgeworth thought about this one long and hard. It isn't my place to interfere. Nick, are you sure? Were you reading my mind? There's nothing we can do about it. This is his problem now. For 15 years, I've had a recurring dream, a nightmare. It's only a nightmare, that's what I told myself. But now I know it wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer? You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shot, it wasn't a suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal, in the DL6 incident, it was me. It was me. Your Honor, I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. You should probably 
point at yourself, bud. <sighs> oh. So, um, so what? What happened? Uh, order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitation runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Doesn't come up very often. Turns out, pretty rare. Bah, it's obvious. We hold a trial right here, right now. We tried this man for his crime of 15 years. Uh, do we? I mean, he just said he did the crime, so. That's a, that's a guilty verdict right there. I think, I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. Ooh. Check off like the gun? <gasps> December 28th, 2.24 PM. District Court, defendant lobby number two. You know, if we drag this out for another nine and a half hours-ish, uh, he get off scot-free. I'm sorry, right? I just wasted all of your effort. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't believe it, sir. I mean, you killed your dad? I didn't want to believe in myself, detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. I'm a bad boy and I need a spanking. <laughs> murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy, just crazy. <gasps> Nick, what are you doing? Uh, oh, I was, I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your, your case for what? Good question. Oh, the bet was 15 years in solitary confinement. Wow. I think people just like 15. That's like a good number. Your case for what? Huh? Isn't it obvious I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent? And I'm gonna slap my pee popper while I'm at it. Whoa, what are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He admitted. Yeah, manslaughter and murder aren't like the same thing. So. I'm, I'm sorry, Edgeworth. Okay, fine. Okay, yeah, okay. Let's do some deduction. Let's, I'm a big, big old detective fan. So I think we can figure this out. Okay, uh. Um. Photograph of the murder scene. I can't really tell where he got shot from. But according to uh, this photograph, look at this photograph. Every time I do, it makes me laugh. Yeah, that's what we're looking at, Al. The bullet in the door. Um, It looks like a straight shot. You know, if you look at it. It looks like it would have been from, you know, four or so feet up at least. And not a gun that got dropped on the ground. That would have been diagonal, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm collecting my, my thoughts here. Taken from Gregory Edgeworth's heart, still bears clear ballistic markings. I mean, with that, we could at least... We would have it known whether or not it came from the same gun. Hmm, interesting. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe you are a nightmare. Oh, what? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, 
Tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove you're innocent. Trust me. Right. December 28th, 2.30 p.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge, Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, through though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? Uh, no. No, Your Honor. On Karma, you knew this was going to happen from the very beginning, didn't you? Very well. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? I missed the parrot. Can we get the parrot back on the stand? <laughs> Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? I don't know. It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. Ooh, juicy. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. I, I don't I don't remember. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember what he told me about the dream. Please, please. That was a whole week ago. Or like five days ago or something. That day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. Von Karma did the crime. I'm calling it right now. Okay. So, at this point, Von Karma already had a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth because Gregory Edgeworth is the one man who put a stain on his otherwise perfect record. And so, you're the only person with motive. Aside from Yanni Yogi, who we know didn't do it because he just, he said that would be Manfred Von Karma. I'm calling it now. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna get him. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Okay, and that is his right hand, okay? So his right, the fingerprints would be from his right hand. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That's all. Hmm. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. We were stuck in the elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, I, and I lost my memory of the events. Bah, the same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Ooh. Uh, did the gun have the safety on? Because, like... Guns don't just fire when you drop them. You specifically, that's like, you don't do that. Mm, what trial was it though? Uh, what was the trial your father was involved in on that day? I don't remember things very clearly. Only two things. I know my father lost and Mr. Von Karma was the prosecuting attorney. Oh, well, isn't that very interesting, in fact. Mr. Von Karma, you were handling the case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem in Von Karma's evidence. Um, we're getting there. Okay, earthquake, sure, sure. Press you on the earthquake. 
So we're three people, including yourself, trapped in the elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help. Okay, they lost their composure and began to argue. Well, what were they arguing about? Oh, or what did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... I don't even know what that means, Al. <laughs> uh, something heavy fell at your feet. That's very interesting. What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi's. The safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. I, I don't know that I'm buying that, but okay, sure. And you picked it up. What happened next? Picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. Uh, don't you think that just pointing the gun would have been the right thing to do? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick, I, I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. A moment later, there was a single gunshot, then a scream. The gun fired once? Yes, I, I think. After I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they've echoed in my head every day. The gunshot and that horrible scream. The scream. Uh, ooh. To this day, yes, I can practically hear it now. I doubt I will ever forget that scream as long as I live. Okay, I already know where this is going, and I love it, by the way. We need to get Von Karma to scream so that Edgeworth will hear the scream and know that it was not the scream of his dying father, but in fact, the scream of Manfred Von Karma Upon learning that he'd murdered a man. The man that had caused him so much pain in his personal life. There we go. <laughs> uh, there it is. One part of that testimony clearly contradicts the evidence. Oh, does it? Shit. Uh. Uh, okay. Wait. Barrel. Okay, the bird, yeah, sure. I mean, does this look like a man who screams? No, he's dead. <laughs> Wait, okay. Uh, oh, does it say that he died immediately? Trapped in the elevator, one bullet found in the heart. Okay, wait, what evidence does that contradict? The scream. Hmm. The scream, the gunshot, the scream. One bullet through the heart? Yeah, maybe a second bullet through the elevator. Does it? Okay, interesting. This feels like another save. I still haven't fucked up yet. But I don't know what it means! I better find out and quick. I dig onto the courtroom. Okay. Is we went to leave an earthquake? A single gunshot, then a scream. Uh... 
A single gunshot. Yeah, okay. I would like to present you with... Uh... Uh, the gun? Because it was only fired once in this most recent murder. This was the gunshot. Or was it... Uh... Oh, man. It's okay, I saved. If I fuck it up, it's fine. I will show you the gun. Your Honor, what do you think about the witness's statement? Uh, I'm not sure I follow. It, oh, shit. Nope. Okay, so not that. But he says to do it here. Terrible scream, I remember it to this day. So this is where I need to present the evidence. Okay. No clues found on the scene. No clues found on the scene. One bullet. The murder weapon was fired twice. <gasps> oh, there we go. Uh, a single gunshot. Okay, I'm going to present here. And victim data. Okay. I got it. I objection. Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and the scream. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. You're a big fucking dummy, and I'm about to tell you why. Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? This is the third time I've done it. I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Uh, the victim data page. Look at the victim data on this file. It says, quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired... twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot, yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Von Karma? Hmm... Was there perhaps... Another shooter who fired that second shot. Maybe someone on a grassy knoll. Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There's no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Hmm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with this case? Um... A uh, great question. Do I have proof? Uh, the bay, bay. Taken from Edgeworth's heart, still bears clear ballistic markings. Okay, so this is the bullet that came out of his heart. 
check this one more again. No clues found at the scene. Trapped in the elevator. One bullet found on the heart. The murder weapon was fired twice. Uh, okay. Fired three times. Found in the victim's body. Um... I think it's this. I think the other... I think the second one... It's gotta be the ele that hole in the elevator door. I do have any proof. Probably. Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. The two bullets look different, do they? Uh, they don't look that different. <laughs> they don't look that different to me. Uh, they look like that. <laughs> they look pretty similar. <laughs> what? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Yeah, okay. Right after I save, I will show you the proof. <laughs> All right. Yes, I have evidence, and you will find the evidence right here. Question mark. I'm less sure of this one. Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So, let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Honor, please, please get a clue. Um, the... It's, it's right there. It's, it's this whole, it's this, this whole area. <laughs> what? Yeah, because this heart is over here, but this hole, as you can clearly see, is up here. It's in this area. <laughs> uh, as should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there's also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired the second shot as he was unconscious from the lack of oxygen in the elevator. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but I'm having a blast with this game. Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after he fired, after uh, he f fired, the shot he fired rang out. I know how to read. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the... Case summary page. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Oh, it says there's no clues. Look what is written there. Not a single clue is found on the scene. That's because you kept the bullet. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. Until today. Why? 
because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the only one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. The whole truth. H-O-L-E. The whole truth. Golf clap. Uh, it was undoubtedly something else that made the bullet hole in the door. Are you... what? No, it was a bullet. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. That the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, a second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So, all we have is the single bullet fired. I'm afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. <laughs> Gah, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Babo, hello. Also, ad break. <laughs> have I been wrong about this whole incident? No. Von Karma did the shooting, he shot the gun, and then he took the bullet. As a prosecutor, he knows if there's no clues, then he can't be tried. Something, something. You know? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? Great question. And we're going to answer that question. If I pause this, does it, does the music stop happening? Oh, nice. Okay, well, awesome. Well, I can't wait to get to the end of it. And we will get to the end of it after this commercial break. Right after these messages. <laughs> we'll be right back <laughs> after these messages. Zord and Titanus, the motorized carrier Zord. They morph with Megazord to form the ultimate battle machine, Ultra Zord. Say, who's watching where we're going? Huh? Not me, I'm not. Uh oh! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. Pinky, let me show you where I get the munchy marshmallows that are fun to add to the milk chocolatey taste of Cocoa Krispies. It's up there. Marshmallow cloud, millions of them. Uh oh, we've been followed. You pack the bags, I'll prepare for takeoff. For a limited time, you can get a free pack of marshmallows and Kellogg's Cocoa Krispies cereal. Part of this complete breakfast. With their sweet taste, so milk chocolatey, they're fun to add to my Cocoa Krispies. Did I forget to invite you to the pool party? Well, maybe next year. On those occasions when you need to make a big splash, there's the Super Soaker 100. It has a powerful air pressure system. Oh, Buffy! A range of up to 60 feet. And a drenching spray. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Also the 50 or the ultimate, the 200. Batman's battle against crime never ends. And now you can bring the action home. Batman, ha ha, you missed. Yeah, but I only missed once. You can't escape Joker. Just watch if you can. You won't be alone for long. And in the Batcave. No criminal can hide from Batman. Batman, gotta run to jail. Each item sold separately from Toy Biz. It's some time in the future. 
the ultimate challenge. Crossfire. Crossfire. You get caught up in the crossfire. Crossfire. You get caught up in the crossfire. 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 You'll get yeah. caught up in it. My nephew Scrub about to run into trouble again. Hey, Bobo, where's your video game? In here. Oh, look at this. Uh oh, it's my dad. So I want to hold it. What will I do? You'll see. But that's not the only problem he has. Hey, here's a shortcut. Not down there, Square. I don't think it's safe. Come on, the coast is clear. I'm not taking a chance, Lance. Oh no. Well, well. Hello, dog face. Come to give us your sneakers. Uh oh. Trouble again, Scrub. What are you gonna do now? I don't know. If you get my new comic activity book, More Adventures with Scrub, you'll find out what you can do about bullies, drugs, and guns. Am I the hero again? You'll see. And you'll see lots of games. Cool. For your free copy of my new comic activity book, write Scrub McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Scrub McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. And you'll be helping take a bite out of crime. I want it, I want it! Hey man, get portable. Get a Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. A color portable Game Gear, carrying case, and two hit games. Sonic 2, and the Majors Pro Baseball. Whoa, you even save 50 bucks. The Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. You know who makes it. Coffee? Tea? Dig up! Behold my most horrifying creation. Graveyard Ghoulies. Squeeze the colored goop into the mold. Or use glow goop and out pop body parts. Stomach, heart, brain. It's Graveyard Ghoulies. Graveyard Ghoulies are a creepy crawler fright. So beware of what happens at night. Creepy Crawlers Workshop. Your parents put it together. Light bulb not included. Graveyard Ghoulies mold pack and glow goop each sold separately. Scanners! The new Scanners Commander! Now you can capture and create your own tribe with the new Scanners Commander! Scanners! Hunter acquired. Mutants, monsters, mercenaries, and more! Keep the best and banish the rest! Sorry, Hogface, you're out! Until you've created the perfect tribe! Then battle head-to-head -head Scanners! In a fight to the finish! Your monster's mine! New Scanners Commander comes with 126 cool monster cards, batteries not included, from Radica. It's balloon magic! It's amazing elastic plastic! Ordinary balloons go pop, but elastic plastic balloons do not! Just roll, stick, and blow for fun balloons filled with air, even a big balloon bear! You get three different colors and three special blow wands! Now at leading retailers. When your dad was your age, he had ants in the pants. He did? Now you've got them. Wow! Remember the fun of ants in the pants? Ants away! Now you can pass it on to your kids. Yeah. My last ant! Flip all your ants into win. Yes. You've got ants in the pants. I do, Grandpa. I really do. And who could forget, don't spill the beans. Be careful, Grandpa. Don't spill the beans, Grandpa. Pass on the fun of ants in the pants and don't spill the beans. There's cootie and don't break the ice, too. Technology is changing faster than ever. For the latest in computers, look to Best Buy, where you'll find the threshold of performance, the 133 megahertz Pentium processor. It's standard in this new Packard Bell computer. And with a 1.2 gig hard drive, 16 megs of memory, and Windows 95, this is a computer on the cutting edge. Computer, the revolution, headquarters, only at Best Buy. And what a commercial break that was. And now it's time for justice. All right, I also have to put the volume back on. <gasps> Why aren't you raising an objection? That's your favorite thing to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Maya. What? 
it, it looks like I was wrong. Nick, if this second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No, no. Ooh, 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 ooh. I bet, I bet uh, Mia is finally going to show back up. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth de declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw the photograph, when I look at the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But now, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime, and that means only one bullet exists. That's what that means. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been paying attention to the trial so far? Y yes your honor. Do you have any objections? No. No I do not. So you killed your father though that was not your intention. Yes. I did. Oh no, he's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying, but my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Uh, I can. I object. Mr. Wright. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I, I do have an objection. <laughs> I objection. I objection. Um... Uh, Feels like I'm gonna get in trouble if I objection, but um, I got I got a lot of points left. I can fuck up one more time. Objection. Your Honor, this is bullshit. <laughs> save early and save often. Mister, I done what grounds do you object? Hmm. Oof. Nick, I don't, I don't know. His case is perfect. Oh no! Grrr. It must exist. The second bullet. <gasps> I saw my hot girlfriend, my hot dead girlfriend. What? What did you just say? Nothing. <laughs> the second bullet must exist. Yeah, true. I haven't actually reloaded. I've just been saving often. Someone took... Yeah, I know. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. Hmm? I, uh... The, the second bullet. It, uh, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. Uh, you can't prove a negative, Your Honor. That's not how proof works. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just that someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. <laughs> but who? The, the murderer. The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this? Murderer. I'm, I'm still thinking about that one. No, you're not, Phoenix. You know who did it. Because I know. And I'm the audience. You should be ahead of me. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. But why? Because this exact situation that's happening. First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? 
The murderer had to find it. Of course there was a need. That's why they took it. Bah, what possible reason could they have had? Well, the reason the murderer took the bullet away from the scene from the... The bullet would be proof. Yeah, what? Yeah. The bullet... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what? Uh-oh. It was a special bullet, so they took it with them. Wait, what? If that's the case, then they should have taken the bullet from inside Gregory as well. That's stupid. What? Why would they only take one of the two shots fired? All right. Mr. Wright, have you really thought this through? I'm going to have to penalize you. That's fine. That's fine. Totally fine. Uh, yeah, the, the, the murderer had to find it. Because he was being cautious, I suppose. Is that even different? Oh, uh, because cause he... K Karma knew that if the second bullet was found, then that they would know that there had been two shots fired when only they only found the one bullet inside of Gregory Edgeworth. So... Oh, well, the murder was a very cautious sort, you see? That's why the murderer had to search for that bullet. Because if there had only been one bullet, one shot fired, he knew that he could frame Miles for the killing. But if there were two bullets, then there would have to have been a second shooter. If that was the case, then they should have taken the- Oh, shit. Oh, he did the same thing. <sighs> yeah, that's not good. Okay, he didn't need the bullet. He kept it for a keepsake. Why would the murderer have taken, spent the time to look for the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What, what, what's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah, the murderer had no reason to take the bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. <clears throat> had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? This is bullshit, because the game is going to say what I said was right, but it, it's making me go through all this bullshit first. You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. I am crazy. <laughs> I'm insane. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. M Mr. Wright? Y yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene, but the murderer had to take the bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance, uh, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer. Oh, backfire. The bullet hit the murderer. Just say, just saying for like an ex as an example. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it. You'd have to take it with you. Ah, it's not like you could perform surgery right there, you know. Oh, I wonder where did where did Von Karma get shot? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's what really happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And they left with the second bullet still inside of them. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Oh, I do remember that the m <gasps> The metal detector! That would 100% be able to find a bullet on, say, Von Karma's person. But there's a problem with that. No, I'm real sm- I have this whole thing figured out. 
The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside. Yes. Someone who was at the court that day. Even. Probably. Oh, I see what you did there, chat. I like that. Well, well played. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet hits the murderer. Aha. Uh -huh. The boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Mmm, Mr. Wright, you are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I have ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. <gasps> Is this why he only ever uses his left arm? Because his right arm got shot? What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? 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 I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy, you say? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Uh. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank God, there's a flashback. Gregory, uh, Gregory is most to blue to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. Yes, an unusual event. Because he was recovering from the surgery, from the, from the getting, because he got shot. That was the first and only vacation he's taken in many years of prosecuting. Blah, blah. I forgot that I was doing the... Okay, if I ever have to talk as Grossberg again, I remember the voice now. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? But took it because he was injured! Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident! He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth! It was Von Karma! Oh, man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well, you've indicated the possibility that the murder came from outside. Can you give us a name of your suspect? Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Say it now. <laughs> it's because I couldn't remember. I was just doing the judge voice again. <laughs> Well, I, I think it was more like this. There is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Big if true. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? V v vagina. Oh, my hands are shaking. V v what? <laughs> bon Karma. Von, von Karma. And now for the proof. You mean the Von Karma, the prosecutor, the one standing right over there? Bah. You don't object. I see no need. Why, Anna, this is a ridiculous outburst with my objection. Why honor the... Oh, I thought he was talking to the judge. Why honor... <laughs> because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery now. Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Nick, let's find out whose doctor is. That's 
Maya, that's stupid. He's baiting us, obviously. He didn't go to a doctor. He just has a bullet living inside of him. Uh, it's worth... I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. I would leave a doctor as a witness. No witnesses. That's his, uh, that's his catchphrase. Uh, nobody's that perfect. So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Okay, I, well, debatable. Wait, what does that mean? The bullet has to be somewhere, but, but where? Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Yes, yeah, I can, yep. Yeah, it's actually quite simple, Von Karma. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the magnet would be that would be great oh man if the parrot came <laughs> with a magnet oh, this would be the perfect case what? the evidence approves Von Karma was shot is a metal detector a dog wouldn't be able to do it and a fishing pole wouldn't be able to do it Luckily for me, I have a metal detector. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. Look at him. You, you don't mean. I do, your honor. This motherfucker has a bullet in him's body. <laughs> Is that even possible for all these years when lead, lead poisoning is a thing? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Oh, and oh, oh. And then he's going to scream and then Edgeworth is going to be like, that's the scream I hear in my dream. The dream scream. Well, Von Karma, I'm going to run this over you and see what we find. Uh, oh, I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means you acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. <gasps> How could this have, have, have happened? Order! Your Honor, the defense requests will be allowed to use the metal detector. Oh! It does appear as if Von Karma is sweating bullets. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. Uh. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, wh uh, what does this mean? I, I don't know. Yeah, and also I was right the whole time. By the way, I lost a lot of points on this case and I think it's bullshit. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. Eh? <gasps> beep, beep, Richie. Oh no, it reacted. Something's inside of his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma? You, it was you. I was afraid this would happen, and so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my... Sure, you got me. There's a bullet. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I 
I think he dresses well. I don't know about the slick back hair though. It's not, I'm not into it. I'm more of an Edgeworth guy. Uh, I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Uh, that's, uh, that's stupid. Uh, yeah, how do you prove that? I have no obligation to prove anything. Uh, it is Mr. Wright who must prove something here, not I. Is Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Kammer's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. Actually, I do, you fuck. It's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. I, but I, I do. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here is my final proof. It's literally the last thing in my thing. Boop. That's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings? You may recall the term. It came up in the trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. It's quite cool. That's a reference. <laughs> we have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets, then if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol, in other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <sighs> Mr. Von Karma, will you let us remove the bullet from your shoulder? Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a no. I don't, I don't think he's into it. <laughs> These onomatopoeias are killing me. The scream! I've, I nailed this one so hard, it's unbelievable. Yeah, the dream scream. From your cream dream. Wait. <laughs> Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet, you're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll, I'll stop you. <laughs> stop breathing my air. Get away. Get away from my father. Ugh. No, we're just gonna pull it out right in court. It's a scream I've heard in the elevator 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed. Yeah, he was just a boy. Mr. Von Karma? <gasps> oh! It's all coming together! So, it was you. You and your father are my curse. <laughs> 
Oh no, he's not hot anymore. He's lost his mind. Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll bury you. Oh no, oh boy, he's gone full crazy. Oh, 15 years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you uh, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I I was careless. I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth! Guy really hates this Edgeworth guy. It was a shock like none I had ever known. Me? Penalized? It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. Oh. I was in pain, horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. And in my rage, I shot Gregory Edgeworth. Now much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then it was destiny. Bang. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tisk, 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 indeed. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge? What? What? Hmm, let's see, do I have a, uh... Boy, Twitch is, Twitch is being a real b-hole right now. What's up with that? There we go. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, it looks like we got five seconds left. All right. Von Karma just recounted his murder of Gregory Edgeworth, who, at the time of the murder, was still unconscious. Thus, when his spirit came back to testify in the DL6 case, he mistakenly identified the perpetrator as Yanni Yogi, as he never saw anyone come into the elevator. What are you doing? Do your job, bring it into this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. I declare that Von Karma. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. My assistant right now and her whole family are mediums. Uh, my assistant channeled her dead sister in a previous trial and their mother channeled Gregory Edgeworth to testify in the case against Yanni Yogi. But he got off, so it's fine. Also, yeah, there was a parrot. We did cross-examine a parrot. <laughs> it appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later, to the day. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. You are innocent. You are innocent. 
As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, not guilty. Yay! Confetti! Woo! Yeah! We did it! Time to celebrate! There we go. Woo! <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. There we go. Let's get some celebrates out there. <laughs> I did it! I got everything right except for the things that I got wrong. December 28th, 5.38 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. <gasps> Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. Which is odd for a Dracula. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed. Yeah, go to jail, go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of the tears the whole time myself. That's actually a huge question. I do have a save file from before I picked the metal detector. So I can redo the case and see what happens. Uh, but now it's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Are you going to become a defense attorney? Just like your dad? Are you going to be like your daddy now? Right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. But I love you. I want to kiss your mouth. <gasps> I know, I know, try... Thank you? I... I see. Th thank you, right? You're welcome. Now let's all go to bed together. Right, Maya? How old are you, Maya, actually? Uh, I think you could have done better than that. You should... Oh, him. He could have done... Okay, yeah. Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. Oh, he's just shy. You got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She got you there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. What, what is that? Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. Uh, Really? Edgeworth, you think Edgeworth is old? I think he just died at white to look cool. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month, but who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. Also, uh, don't, doesn't Phoenix get paid for this trial? I should treat everyone. That's how you say thank you. No, it's just like, it's just really cool. He just did a cool thing. I think it's just gelled. He just used too much product. Hmm, I, I see. <clears throat> Whoop! <laughs> I, I feel foolish. Don't worry, take it a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Oh yeah, I guess he's only, he's 24? These lawyers are very young. Oh, Lotta Hart! What are you doing here? Hey, y'all! Oh, it's Lotta! My favorite! Y'all were great in there. Th thank you! Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank, thank y'all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you, you wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. 
You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? That, that should be a question mark. It's fine. Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Oh, Larry! Larry Butts is here! It's over, Nick. My life is over. Oh no, Keonse broke up with him, probably. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, you don't, you don't look sick. It's Keonse. She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind. I yeah, should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Um, yes, here I am. <laughs> Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you come along tonight too. You my treat, pal. I'm sorry, who's an Olympic athlete? <laughs> I feel like I missed something in chat. Uh, huh? Oh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Oh, the, 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 I thought she was a model. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. That's the suit that quest. Oh, okay. He's talking about, okay. I got it. Aww. Oh, the Olympics are in Paris. I had no <laughs> I had no idea. When he says treat, that's not police talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Oh yeah, Larry and Edgeworth and also Phoenix, they're all best boyfriends. Right. Uh yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it? Well, yeah, that's that's not strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? <gasps> Wait, the, the, the case of the missing $38. Huh, what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick, wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38, no. No, Larry, it was you? What are you so surprised about, right? He's a fuck up. <laughs> Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I never was good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know. You didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you the way he did that day. Oh, right, everyone thought Phoenix did it. Except for Edgeworth, he was, he was a nice good boy. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Even the teacher, for some reason. Yeah, too well. Right? You may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know. Really, right? I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, there sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think that the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. <laughs> there you have it. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, I've always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. 
Yeah, and you get worked up too easily too. Uh, Larry, that he, you just re-said the same thing he said, but stupid. Uh-oh, now Phoenix is gonna be the murderer. Come back for Phoenix Wright too. The one where he murdered his two best friends because they lied to him when they were children. <laughs> And if only I had known, I would have become a prosecutor. Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. I'm such a bad boy. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all, line up, I'll take a photo. Oh, okay. Why are you still here? Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for the, uh, the, the, uh, what is it called? It, when everyone jumps up in the air and then they, then it's a, a freeze frame. There we go. I got there. I got a, I got a big old brain. And after that, dinner on me. Freeze frame! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. He celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom, even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m. Wright and Company Law Offices. Oh, I, do I get to see Mia one last time? Whoa, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh, it's still only five? Maybe we should go back to sleep. Hmm. Uh, what's this, a uh, letter? No, is Maya gonna quit? Oh, I would... Ah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed, I guess. Uh, good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you, it made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium, in training of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. <sighs> I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. No, but your hot sister who lives in you or something. Goodbye. What, what time is it? Oh, the first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station. Maya, I need you. I, I love you. I guess I'm too late. Whoa, hey. Nick, M Maya. So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. Why don't you just be my assistant, like a normal fucking people? And, I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? No! Nice. <laughs> that is the most perfectly executed hold it so far. Wait. Well, what? <laughs> I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard of her. I heard Mia's voice. Oh, come on. Don't bring, don't bring her sister into it. Just tell her you love her. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. No, it, it's a good job. She can do spirit training while also being my assistant that you know you can do two things oh uh, that's my sister for you detective gumshoe helped and, and mr grossberg and even larry i'm the only one who couldn't help i'm use i was useless nick but you were the one who stopped von karma maya huh and you took a stun gun to the face so pretty impressive all I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Oh, do I? <laughs> uh, 
the, cause she took, she's the one who had, yeah, okay, I got it, cool. E evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. Look, here's your dead mom. <laughs> oh my God, that would be the most fucked up thing to do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, here's your dead mom, idiot. Uh, <laughs> a, a bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. I love you, babe. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I would do anything to you. I would do anything for you. What? What are we doing? I'll be back soon. Oh, you're still leaving? But, the, but I did everything right. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run the office by yourself. You're hopeless. Oh, okay. Oh, whew. Oh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Bye, Maya. Aww. Still like your sister better. <laughs> uh. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice detective attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters, plus a few new ones, probably. Uh, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim? Oh, are we doing like flashbacks? Uh oh, I got a bad feeling about this. I objection. Shoot, Takumi, you did a great job. I love it. Hey pal, Mr. Edgeworth came to the precinct and wished me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Oh, he's learning to have fun. Oh, I love it. I mean, her sister did have, uh, she was, she was really smart? Question mark. <laughs> Uh, and that's the only reason I, I, I preferred her. She had a really big... brains. That's why. Oh, that Missy's a night lady. She's not... what do they call it? Oh, Missy. But she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah, her sister died at... She was the second victim in the game. Uh, who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. Oh, you know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. I don't even remember the fuck... Who the fuck is that guy? Well, I'm sure these credits won't go on too long. Oh, the bellboy! Oh, the defense attorney who I wrote the affidavit for, yes. Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel. Oh, like Watergate, but backwards. I remember that. Vaguely. Ah, mm, oh, it's you. Phoenix right? ah, yes. Be his understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, the days of my youth like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Ah, of course, yes. <laughs> uh, should I stop? <laughs> Surely these credits won't go on for much longer. We're already at the third case. Blah, 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 what do you mean? 
This is how he sounds. Uh oh, I hope you get some sleep. Oh, the Steel Samurai. Oh, nice. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public's eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know? You know what? I actually think I used... Uh, I think that guy was... I was doing the gumshoe voice for that guy. Oh, Penny! I thought you did a murder that one time. Sorry. Oh, cool! Uh, she's living in a waterfall, probably. Manual. What does that mean? Just somebody wrote the manual for the game? Oh, it's boy! Cody. Oh man, he's all about Pink Princess now. Hmm, mm-hmm. I thought he did a murder too. <gasps> oh, whoa! Hey, that's not cool. What a little brat. I hate that kid. I wish he would have done a murder so he could be in jail forever. Oh, oh, she's gonna be a paranormal um, paranormal photographer. That's cool. <gasps> oh, a ghost. Uh, what happened with the boy? He saw, uh, he was a witness in the Steel Samurai case. I had to bribe him with trading cards. <gasps> there she is! There's Mia! Looking good. Despite the being dead thing. Well, that's the end of the game, everybody. Oh, never mind. Oh. I'm sorry, what? A brand new episode has been added. Wait, what? There's another thing? I thought that was, I thought that was the end of all the things. Uh, uh? What's happening? I don't know what's happening. Is this just gonna be a cutscene? Oh, okay. The DLC, gotcha. Whoa! It's like some rotoscope shit. What am, what is happening right now? <laughs> Oh, that's the police mascot. I know him. Oh, okay. Well, there's still more game yet to play. That's interesting. Uh, probably gonna be a while before I actually do this, but uh, hey, I had a great time. Uh, I hope you had a great time. Probably going to be back on tomorrow for something a little more action-y. I've been solving cases for so long. So many cases that I've solved. Uh, I feel like it's time to just, like, shoot guns or uh, do, do a Sonic or something. But we will be back. And I will very likely do uh, the, the rest of the... I'll do the rest of the games, probably. I really like this game. Um, but until then, uh, let's see. Oh, looks like Cam is playing some, some Mario Party. So I'll just drop you off over there, and I hope everyone has a great night. And until next time, don't do crimes if you can't do the time, because I'm going to find you guilty. Cause I'm really good at doing, uh, be, uh, um, cause of lawyers. Cause I'm a good lawyer. Okay, bye!